Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zanata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colt and in this video we're going to be going over a deep dive into team spaces inside of Zoho CRM for everyone. Uh, before we jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. Uh, if it sparks any feedback, questions, or additional video requests, leave those in the comments down below that like button as we do try to read through each and every one of those on a weekly basis. So without any further ado, let us jump right on into the walkthrough. So I'm going to break down this walkthrough into like two main parts here. First, what we're going to do is go over just what a team space is, how to configure one of them, how to assign it to your users and how to use team modules within that team space. Then what we're going to do is jump into some of the unique permissions inside of a team space. Uh, where we'll kind of flip back and forth here between an admin and a user. So you can kind of see both sides of the process in action here inside of the CRM. To get started, what we'll do is take a look at team spaces themselves and kind of how they're configured. So down here in the bottom left inside of our CRM for everyone uh, UI, we have this little pop out tab, which will show all of our team spaces. So I'm going to click on manage team space here and we'll take a look at what we've got. So on the left here, this CRM team space, this is everything, right? This is like a default one that's going to come with your CRM for everyone experience. Um, and in this case, we basically just have all of the modules listed, reports and dashboards enabled and assigned to our users. Now, what I've done here is I've assigned this CRM team space only to the administrator team right? Because other users were going to create unique team spaces for them that they'll be able to use to see the data that's relevant for their particular role. Now, over here on the right, I have a new team space that I have created, right? And so I've created this team space. I've given it the name of sales. Under this modules section, we can add modules and we can actually even add folders. Right. So here I've created folders for activities, transactions, customers and marketing. And then within each of those, I've essentially selected modules, added them to our list, and then I've clicked and dragged them into the appropriate section for that particular module. This is one of my favorite things about team spaces in general is just this ability to create folders where each of the various modules will go. So if we look at what this means for a user over here, they've got like customers, which will have accounts, contacts and deals within that folder. So when you're onboarding a new user, just being able to group things up like this, make things a lot more clear and easy for a user to navigate around the system and interact with various different types of data. Once you have all of these modules configured here, what you will need to do is come down to the bottom and define who should have access to this particular team space. What I recommend doing is putting your administrator profile in essentially all of them. Again, by default, administrator basically has access to everything anyways. I just like to do this for visual clarity. Then what I recommend is assigning these out based on roles. If you didn't catch it, we actually recently put up a video of customizing profiles and roles to support CRM for everyone. Really recommend taking a look at that video. It's pretty quick and easy to set these things up and it will make life much easier as you move over to the new user experience. But so here I've essentially assigned a sales manager and sales user to this sales team space, right? And then I can go ahead and save this. And so again, we're not going to spend too much time on just clicking and dragging the modules here. We also have a full video that walks through kind of all of this stuff at a higher level um, that is up on the channel from last week. So I do recommend checking that out as well. But now let's get into some of the more detailed configuration options for a team space, right? Because so far, really what we've done is just take a bunch of our normal modules and organize them into folders and assign them to a group. Right. So nothing that crazy has really happened yet. It's really just a different organization of those same modules for the team. Let's look at something that's totally new inside of team spaces, and that's the ability to create a team module. So you're probably wondering, like, what's the point of a team module? Right. Couldn't I just make an organization module and then only assign it to certain roles? 
Well, you could, but there are some unique and customizable permissions inside of a team module that are inaccessible in other places in the system. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. So I'm gonna make a team module here. We're gonna go ahead and just pick from a template. We're not gonna to spend too much time on, on like adding fields and things like that. That's not really a big concern for us. So we'll use this template here. I am gonna add just a quick couple fields to this. So we'll be right back when I'm done. All right, so I went ahead and added just a field to look up to a deal and a field to look up to the account. As I was doing that, I wanted to pause and just kind of show you guys a little bit about what this is gonna do from a permissions point of view, um, because it's a bit of a uh, foreshadowing for some of the unique permissions in these modules. So you'll see here over on the right, we have this set of permissions for admins, managers, members, participants, and requesters. These are a totally unique set of essentially module specific profiles that allow us to get even more granular with some of our permissions inside of a team space. It also allows us to use one of the newer workflows inside of CRM, which is a request, which I will show in just a little bit. Um, thought I would just pause here and show that just because again, these are pretty valuable and we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about these permissions. Now, when I go ahead and add this, I am just gonna put it into a folder. I'm gonna put it in customers because it's gonna connect directly to a deal account and contact. So we'll create that module. This just takes a moment to spin up and now we have our module created. And so here, let's think about a little bit of what's unique inside of a team module. Basically the driving purpose behind team modules is to create a unique module assigned to a team where they have some extra autonomy to build that module how they would like it, right? And so kind of how that comes in is something like the accounts, right? Everybody in the organization is gonna use accounts, marketing, customer service, fulfillment, accounting, uh, sales, everybody's gonna be in there. And so that could, that's gonna be an organization module where you're probably gonna have a bit of a stricter process for any types of customization that need to occur there. Something like a demo, right? A demo is really just a step in the sales process that's feeding into the deal flow. And so you may be comfortable saying, hey, let's let the sales team have some more autonomy inside of that module to customize it how they would like. And so the way that this really works is outside of some of the user profiles and permissions, these modules work as normal, right? We can add fields, we can make canvas views, layout rules, workflows, blueprints, all that good stuff. Where things start to get a little more interesting is if we go into this manage user access um, inside of the module itself. And so of course, we're always gonna have admins, right? They're just able to do everything. But now there are these four additional categories of permissions that are unique to a team module. I'll go through them kind of quickly. They're, they're relatively self-explanatory and it does give us a little blurb here. So a manager can basically do anything to any of the records inside of this module. They're basically a pseudo admin. A member can view all of the records, whether or not they own them, and they can interact with, whether that's a create, edit, or delete, any records that they own. A participant is similar to a member, so they can view, create, edit, and delete their own records, but they can't see anybody else's data. So a lot of the times, like if I'm gonna have a sales rep in the system, they're probably gonna be a participant, right? Because we don't need them to see all of the deals, all of the demos, but we want them to have a decent amount of autonomy over their own data. Now, a requester is kind of an interesting one because they can create and view their own records, but can't really do much else of anything. And so you may think, okay, like why would I make anybody a requester? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, let me show you why. So I'm gonna add a user. I'm just gonna add our little demo user here as a requester to this module. And so let's go ahead and jump over to that demo user profile and see what a request really is and how it may be used inside of the system. So jumping over to our user profile here, so we're out of the admin, we're into just that day-to-day -day user. This is a sales user that is set up as a requester of the, de the demo module. Now, first thing we'll notice is over here on the side, there's no demo module, right? And that kind of makes sense because again, if we think about what these permissions are, 
right? The requester is only able to create and view things that they have added. So where are they going to go to actually do that? Um, they're going to go to this new little tab here called My Requests. And then we'll see that here is where the demos module is actually going to show up. So let's have them add a new request. Demo was requested by a customer. Here's where you probably want to have your contacts, accounts, and deals being publicly visible, right? So we'll leave this empty for just a moment. Let's say they want this demo on a date. This demo is going to be a video meeting and it is planned, right? And so here they're basically doing like an intake process, right? So this could be like somebody gathering case information and submitting it against products. This could be somebody who is exclusively working leads, right? Maybe they have access to the leads module in a more traditional sense, but now they're going to make like a meeting request for someone on your team who's more of like a closer, right? Who's more equipped to like close that deal and they don't need access to that data. They just need to be able to submit it. So here we'll go ahead and save. Now they'll have all of this data available to them inside of this request module, but Keep in mind, it's not going to show up here on the main page. So really, it's just a pass through, right? They're putting these things in. They're submitting them up to a managing member of that team module and that the managing member will carry the process from there. Let's go back to our admin here and see where everything lands. So now inside of this demos module, we have this demo that's been submitted, right? And here we can open it up and interact with it just like we would any other record in the CRM. So what I'll kind of highlight here is as you're going through and configuring any of these people that are in the requester role, what you very well might want to do is make sure that you have your permissions configured appropriately. So what would we do here to kind of improve this process? Well, the first thing that I noticed is that when this requester was actually going in to submit the record, they couldn't see any contacts, deals and accounts. Right. And maybe we don't want them to be able to edit those, but we do want them to be able to see them. So what we can do is just come into our settings. We can come into our roles and sharing. And we can start to define how people should be able to interact with this data. So in this case, maybe what I'd want to do is come in and make contacts, deals and accounts publicly visible. Right now, you're going to want to think through this, right? I'm just kind of doing this for the purpose of our demo. If there's any private data, then maybe you need to make more of like a sharing rule, right? Or maybe a little automation that applies a particular share criteria. But in our case here, we'll go ahead and just make this as a publicly visible module. So now if we were to jump back over to this user and have them submit a demo request, what would that look like? So I'll click the new request button up here. And now we'll see that we have access to the data that we need to actually submit this request. Again, we'll submit in our demo type and our status and click save. And then these will move through the process. Now, the nice thing is for the requester, they are able to track these over time. So like if somebody, let's say, had like a commission structure around getting meetings set that could be held by other members of the team, they'll be able to follow that process here inside of the request module, even though they're not really able to do much else with any of the data in the system. And so with that, I think we've covered what we need to cover here for kind of a deeper dive into the team spaces. Just be prepared. You're probably going to have a handful of team spaces and it's going to take some time to get all of these little permission elements sorted out. Right. Like even for me, as I'm going through this video, I kind of realized as they were submitting that demo, like, ah, you know what, they probably are going to need access to at least view this other data. And so it's going to take you a couple tries and iterations to get this all built out. What I really do recommend as you're thinking about moving over is getting a couple key members of the team that are going to be kind of like your guinea pigs, right? Because inside of a user profile. So here I am inside of that user themselves, not the admin they do have the ability to switch back, right? And so what I would recommend is have a couple users who maybe are a little bit more savvy inside of CRM, jump over to the new version and help you start to test what's really going to make sense for various different user profiles in your organization. Team spaces are just going to be a big part of how this is all going to click together and how you're going to give each and every different department the right amount of access and autonomy inside of the CRM. 
So with that, I think we're ready to wrap up here for today. If you found this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. If it sparks any questions, feedback, or additional video requests, please do leave those in the comment section down below that like button as we do try to read through each and every one of those on a weekly basis. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.